Games of the 30th Olympiad in 2012 are awarded to the city of London. We'd all been celebrating in the afternoon that London had won the Olympic bid and we just thought it was a good excuse to go out and have a few drinks, really, to celebrate. <laughs> Following morning, my alarm went off. Um, and I am usually very good in the morning. I'm quite a morning person. Uh, that morning, I decided to have ten minutes more in bed. Those ten minutes would come at a price. On July the 7th, 2005, Martine Wright was just another passenger on the London Underground until she sat next to a suicide bomber. I just had a white flash in front of my eyes and I felt like I was being thrown from side to side and I remember consciously thinking, what the hell is going on? Today, the chilling sound the lives of hundreds of totally emergency vehicles the bomb shattered, the name of how to devastated carriages, killing and maiming. Suddenly, it was just black devastation, you know, it just blackness. I don't remember the pain, I just do not remember any pain. Um, all I could see was sort of metal going down into me. I didn't realise that my legs were, were caught up in it and there was just an electrical sort of burning smell and it was getting a little quieter and quieter as well and, and I can only really equate that to in, in the beginning of people were dying and things. I could see this figure coming down towards the door that had been blown off um, and this was Liz, Liz Kenworthy, the off-duty policewoman. Um, and basically this was the, the lady that saved my life. She... Oh, it's all right, it's all right. Just, I just think I'm so lucky. Just so lucky. But, um, she... She came through. And I, I can't imagine again what she was faced with but because you know I was there and she and she saw the state of my legs and uh, I remember seeing her and I just kept saying to her my name's Martine Wright please tell my mum and dad I'm okay my name's Martine Wright so far 700 casualties have been confirmed my family got taken aside uh, by one of the bereavement counsellors and said look we have a lady that is a description of your daughter, but we need to tell you the extent of her injuries. You know, again, just didn't help. You know, because um, they must have been one half of them must have been God. Thank God we found her. Another half must have been look at the state of her. You know. On 7 7 2005, Martine Wright began a quite extraordinary journey. Her very personal story is inseparable from London's public preparations for the Games. By 2007, as London's often embattled organisers were bruised by budget issues and battered by a hostile response to the Games logo, Martine began to reveal her irrepressible spirit, learning to ski and fly. Then in May 2008, as Boris Johnson became Mayor of London, the Beijing Games provided Martine a map for her own journey. I knew that I had to do something as a result of losing my legs that day, otherwise to me it would have been all a complete waste of time. So I was actually looking at the Paralympics in a very new light, in a, in a light of a disabled person, and uh, looking at it and thinking, my God, wouldn't it be amazing to do something like that? So I started playing for a sitting volleyball club. What I did enjoy about it is that you're not in your chair, you know, you, you, you move on, on the floor. It's a very dynamic game, very fast game. I came into politics... In 2010, I Britain elected its youngest Prime Minister in nearly 200 years. With little experience herself, Martine tried out for the first GB sitting volleyball team. 
she was selected to play in the World Championships. In a chilling coincidence, they traveled to the tournament in the USA on July the 7th. That's when I sort of realized, oh my God, I could be on such a special journey. On, on, you know, I could actually end up at the Paralympics. As the mood turned raw during the riots of 2011, it was a tense time for Martine and her teammates, who still had to persuade the British Paralympic Association they were good enough to appear at the Games. The news they dreamed of finally came in March 2012. I just think back and I actually can't believe the journey that has happened and is happening now that I'm on. Um, you know, maybe I was always meant to get up late that morning. Maybe I was always meant to run up the escalator and jump on that carriage that I got on. You know, maybe I was always meant to do this journey. I don't know, I can't, I can't answer that. All I can say is that I'm just lucky to be living this dream now.